Well, fentanyl deaths in the United States are skyrocketing, and according to the CDC, over 150 people die every day from fentanyl overdoses. The DEA says fentanyl is the single deadliest drug in our country. In New York, investigators found 50 pounds of, and $7 million worth of a stash of fentanyl and heroin hidden inside of a coffee table at an apartment in the Bronx. Prosecutors say the man charged had traveled out of the state the very same day he was caught. They also found street-ready envelopes stamped holding those drugs. And in Alabama, a prosecutor says the powerful painkiller killed a high school student after he and four of his classmates were sent to the hospital after taking a drug that could have been laced with fentanyl. This crisis forced Colleen and Brendan O'Brien to step up and raise awareness about the dangers of fentanyl. Last year, they lost their 22-year-old daughter, Neve, to the powerful painkiller. She struggled with addiction since she was just 14 years old. And in honor of her memory, Brendan biked 1,700 miles with Colleen driving alongside him from Vancouver to the U.S.-Mexico border to symbolize where those drugs are coming in. And they join us live tonight to tell us more about their mission. Brendan and Colleen, thank you so much for being here, unfortunately, under these circumstances. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious, how did you come up with the idea to ride your bike from Vancouver all the way down to the U.S.-Mexico border? Well, originally and before our daughter's passing, it was supposed to be something that we were going to do uh, simply to enjoy ourselves, put our bikes on the back of a vehicle and head down the coast and, and wherever we stopped, we'd, we'd pedal around. Um, then my wife kind of dared me, one up me and said, hey, why don't we leave the vehicle at home and just take the bikes? In the interim, our daughter wow. passed and uh, it turned into something much more serious than it had originally been planned to be. And we decided that we would take the opportunity to take time off for ourselves, uh, our own mental health and our mental well-being. Uh, head down the coast and attach to that a fundraising effort um, for or through in which we're being helped by many, many, many other people. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know a piece of your heart for both of you is just uh, forever gone now. Um, you've been able yes. to raise $20,000 for a program called Odyssey One. Tell us a little bit more about that program and why it means so much to your family. When our daughter started drugs at 14, she was trying to alleviate depression and anxiety uh, from coming into high school. And she started with Xanax and it it started to progress from there. She was dating a boy who was involved with, with drugs and Neve became involved herself trying to get him out of it. it she was dragged into it. So her teen years uh, were, were spent, there was about three years there where she was an actual drug addict, which was just horrifying for us because drugs were so foreign to our family and to our, our growing up we had it, it was so as i say foreign so she was clean for four and a half years and during that time when she was clean she worked with odyssey one was the people the charity who helped us during that dark time in our lives they counseled my daughter Nee. they counseled our other two daughters car and Aoife. they counseled us as a couple and us as a family and they were there just trying to help us through this horrible time and we were so excited because when she was clean for four and a half years we thought we've made it but these the fentanyl in the drugs these days it changes the mind it changes the desire it becomes like needing food so the pressure is for our daughter um, um, when she was starting to go to university that year, she was going to become a dental hygienist and she was getting her driver's license. So I think the pressure sort of built up for her. And because there's the fentanyl is one gram is the high, one grain of salt the size of is the high, whereas two grains of salt is the death. And because she um, couldn't use one of our on-site facilities here because she, she knew somebody in the on-site, so she didn't do it safely. Um, she used it alone, knowing that it was wrong, and she she got a deadly dose, and she just died. So after four and a half years clean, she just died. Uh, well, I would also add that uh, Odyssey sure. are a part of, of the. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Odyssey are a part of the Boys and Girls Club and uh, a, a much broader organization, uh, and they have been and continue to be magnificent. There just aren't enough of them in in uh, in. in face of what's going on here, not just in Canada, not just in the United States, but in many countries around the world now. And whilst we cycled, you know, 
one border to to uh, for, over the Canadian border and down to the border with the uh, with Mexico, the United States border with Mexico, as a way of indicating where these drugs are coming from. I'm I'm deeply concerned that other measures are going to have to be taken, which are may, maybe politically difficult to take in order to uh, successfully deal with this drug that's preying on our youth. It's so small. Yeah, I, I'm so sorry, guys, uh, to cut you off here, uh, but we do appreciate your time. And I know so many families probably think this could never happen to us, and it's happened to you. And uh, we appreciate you tonight. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.